want to say I love your voice. I love the voice you have in the book. And I particularly like that passage about how when she went over to the tennis court and the boy came over determined to look Miss Sanderson in the eye and mm -hmm. not be embarrassed, not be ashamed for her. I thought that was a really good thing. It's interesting because um, I don't always write like this. This is a very lyrical kind of approach mm -hmm. that I took in the book. Very much. Um, for me, it was because I think when I was writing it, I really missed my sister quite a lot, and, and the language became almost like a lullaby. It was very soothing to me. And that's, yeah, it, it, it did. It became a little a little lament and a little song. Mm -hmm. And other times, you know, I'm very direct and straightforward and don't have many modifiers and things like that. And uh, sometimes I just write from a quirky, yappy female voice that just talks about stuff. So <laughs> talk um, and she's a lot of fun, too. But, but thank you for commenting on it. And as a writer, too, I do read aloud as I'm composing. You probably do the yes. same thing yes, do. so that I can hear the rhythms and they sound at least right to me. And bat it over to Martha. <laughs> I was just struck when I read it. I, I was a teenager in the 70s, so this time period was, was my time period. Yeah. And um, time and time again, it felt so right to me. Even, I don't know, the, the picnic in the backyard, um, and I just wonder, you were obviously pretty young then. I was. How did you get that so right? I mean, what? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, um, wait, no, <laughs> let, me, let me think and I'll come up with something. No, um, <laughs> no I, I was, uh, there were five children in my family, and they're all clustered together, my brothers and sisters, within a year of each other, and then I am ten years younger than the next youngest. I was a condom that broke, is not what I like to say, but it's actually pretty true. Um, so I grew up tagging along after them, and so I was really immersed in their culture and their music, and just by virtue of being the pest that I, I frequently could be, um, I, I would worm my way into to doing things with my brothers and sisters and their friends. Um, but definitely the time resonated with me. It was a time, you know, I don't, I don't know, I, I sometimes think, I look back on the 70s with a great affection and almost nostalgia. And I remember being young then, and my mother would be like, it wasn't quite the same time that, you know, I see it now with my brothers and sisters, how they like to keep their kids indoors a lot, because there's so many dangers. And they worry about that. And in the 70s, I remember my mom was constantly sort of shuffling us out the door and saying, you know, go play, go, 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 do something. And we also knew, I think, when we were playing, that all the neighbors were watching out for us. I never felt like people didn't really have an eye on me. Um, but I'm really glad that she did that because, I mean, we created whole worlds when we were children outside and, and invented so many stories. And I think Precious certainly uh, brought that up in me, that, that memory of that time. But yeah, I'm glad that the 70s worked. And you're not the first person who, who said that. so. Yeah, and Greg's based on B.J. McKay because I had like this big crush on him when I was little, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> don't know if you remember B.J. and the mirror, but that, that takes us back <laughs> too much. Um, <laughs> anything else? Well, I was curious as to the title of the book, and I know I, I was trying to find, I'm ready to start chapter six. I know who Precious is. Mm -hmm. um, why? Why based on a doll, sort of? Um, I kind of consider that a, a, what I would call an image pattern in the book. So it starts out as the doll, and it sort of morphs because um, there's a line where Eva used to carry Sissy around, mm -hmm. pretending she was her, so that doll image is reincorporated there. And then I won't give away the spoilers, but at the no. end of the book it takes on a different meaning. Okay, well, I swear it becomes... Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, it comes back chapter six. Quite, a few, quite a few times, but I, that's one of the interesting things, too, because I always had the last lines of the book in mind, even when I was writing the beginning, and I kind of knew where I wanted to end up, and there's a line with Precious in the last, the closing lines. Um, and I was really surprised, because I thought for sure Random House would kill that title. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it didn't help. My husband, who had to go to school, and it is 
gone. He's supposed to be manning the cameras. He's just there <laughs> looking at me. He's um, no, he, he actually, you know, I would say I'm going to call it precious. And at the time, it was also, you know, Lord of the Rings, and he would be like, fresh. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not how I meant it. Um, <laughs> It takes you a number of pages before you know about Precious. Yeah. And I was beginning to think, have I lost something? Did I miss something in the beginning? And I would go back through it. And then, okay, now I know who Precious is. Right, right. Now you got it. Uh, yeah. That, that's Because um... you're really um, sparse with getting information. You tell us things when you want us to, when you want to tell us. Yeah. That's a and great, you, that's, you, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a great technique that a, a writing teacher mm -hmm. always taught me, you know, you give enough information to make people curious and then you gradually leak the information right. and the plot to them and that's a way to kind of keep the pacing in suspense. But no, you, I don't think you missed any before them, so that's No, I, I don't think I did, because I get to come back. Thank you for being interested. That's wonderful. Chapter five. Keep your fingers crossed. 